When you think about audio over IP solutions, what comes to mind? Dante, AVB, but there's also NetJack, part of the Jack Audio Connection Kit. And in this video, I'm going to try to explain what the shit is NetJack. To start our video off, I need to explain what you can and cannot do with NetJack, starting with what is it really? I mean, it's an application designed to send and receive multiple channels of audio and MIDI over a local area network. It doesn't require any specialized hardware, doesn't even require audio hardware on the client, and NetJack supports Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and that one dude still running Solaris. More importantly, it's open source. You can do with it as ye will. A couple of things it doesn't really do, doesn't really support Wi-Fi, doesn't like it a lot. You're gonna have a bad time on that situation, and NetJack doesn't support wide area networks. The internet, if you're gonna try doing that, Use something like Sonobus or Jacktrip. In the studio, I have five PCs. At the center is the DAW. Then I have three PCs running WebRTC clients. Finally, I have a dedicated PC for streaming. I need to hijack the audio from the PCs running WebRTC, process it, apply Mix Minus, record a dry copy, and send the process tracks to the PC running OBS to be streamed and recorded post-FX. And I have to do that in real time. If we were to do this using hardware, it would go a little something like this. A multi-channel interface for the DAW. Then I need another multi-channel interface for the PC running OBS. To connect the two, in a basic 6.2 configuration, we're going to need one to eight cables. But we still need to get the audio from the PCs running WebRTC. That's going to require one, two, three additional audio interfaces, and another six cables. That's 19 points of potential failure for those of you keeping score at home. NetJack allows us to replace all of this nonsense with four of these. Before we get started, you need to double check that multicast is enabled on the router switch used in your setup. If you don't, you're not going to have a good time. This is our basic NetJack 2 setup. On the server, after you've started Jack, you're going to run Jackload Net Manager. That's going to get you up and going. It's going to start listening for connections. And on your client or clients, we're just going to run Jack D, D with a net driver. And that should reach out and connect automatically. On the left is a PC we will be using as the NetJack server. I'm going to go ahead and start Jack using QJack CTL. In the Graft Manager, we're going to see 12 capture and 12 playback ports available on my audio interface. Now. Let's start the NetJack server using Jackload Net Manager. That's it. NetJack's ready to go on the server with its default settings. On the client PC, we'll start a regular Jack server using the Net Driver. The output lets us know that Jack has connected to the server and mirrored the available I/O. Anything connected to Threadbooper will be sent over the network to the client PC. If I open a grav on the client PC, I will see 12 inputs and 12 outputs. Let's test it out by sending a little music over to the server for recording. I'm going to connect outs 1 and 2 from all supplier to playback 1 and 2. On the server, we're going to launch Audacity and disconnect it since we're not getting our audio from the interface. Instead, we're going to tell Audacity to get the audio from outputs 1 and 2 on Threadbooper. There we have it. The beeps and boops are flowing over the network connection. Since NetJack is treated like any other jack port, we can adjust volume. Start, stop, fast forward, and rewind. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our NetJack 2 studio setup. It's what I'm using right now to record all of this. But on the server, like the basic, we're going to do the Jackload Net Manager couple of extra bits thrown in though. I want it to listen for incoming connections. I want it to bind to the IP address of the DAW, which happens to be 88.11. And I want to make sure it's on port 19,000. Once I've taken care of that, we can move on to the client. That client command looks like a hot mess because it is, but it's not that difficult once you know what you're looking at. We're starting Jack D. We're setting real time, that's the R, S, synchronous, P is our priority, driver net, C and P are capture and playback. So we have nine and five I and O MIDI ports. I'm not using MIDI over the network. So those are both set to zero. N is the name of the client. L is the latency cycle of two. 
and A is the IP address of the DAW that I want it to connect to, and of course P is port 19000. I'm really tempted to say NetJack Go Burr and call it a day, but that wouldn't be terribly informative. Let's take a look at the server. We have 12 capture and 12 playback ports in the audio interface. But now we have the DAW, Reaper, hanging out in the middle. Our client PC thread booper is here, but I've customized it to have 9 inputs and 5 outputs instead of the default 12. We also have 3 WebRTC PCs, Guest, Jordan, and Pedro. Then I have 1 in 1 out each for mono audio. Everything is fed into Reaper, sent over the network to the PC running OBS. On that box, outputs 1 through 9 go to a couple of things. 1 provides audio to Discord, 6 and 7 sends game audio and music to OBS, 2 through 7 are mixed down into Audacity for backup and recording, 2 through 5 are sent to OBS for individual recording, and a mix down of 2 through 5 go into our live closed captioning system. Audio going to the server consists of also player for background music, game audio output for, you guessed it, game audio, and finally, generic Pulse Audio Sync for getting audio from the web browser, YouTube videos, and the like. NetJack deals with latency with cycles. You can choose 0 through 5, 5 being the default, and of course the highest. At 5 cycles, you're dealing with a mere 16 milliseconds of round-trip latency, and that's cut in half at 2 cycles. You can even get below 3 milliseconds of round-trip latency if you're feeling adventurous. In fact, I have to delay the audio from the DAW by 103 milliseconds so it aligns with the video from the PCs running our WebRTC clients. On the left, we have Reaper running on the server, looping a bit of Linux Gamecast Weekly. The setup is really basic. Four mono tracks in for myself, co-host, each with a couple of plugins to do basic channel strip things. Below that, we have our sins. If we open a routing tab, you can get a better idea how the session is set up. Audio is processed, a little bit of mix minus, recorded and sent over the network to where it needs to go. One of those places is OBS, and that's what you're seeing on the right side. OBS is receiving five channels of audio from the DAW on the server, three mono channels for the host and two additional for the stereo. Just like we were doing with Audacity early on, I can stop, pause, play, all in real time. And if you're wondering how to record multi-track with OBS, it's not that difficult. In setting, output, record, advance, select the tracks you want to record and assign them in the mixer's advanced audio settings. Why, oh why, why do I go through all of this trouble? I can take the video recorded with OBS and drop it into Venture Resolve, and I get this. That's five tracks of audio with all of the processing baked in, ready to go. I can make level adjustments or you know, remove a cough, remove a sneeze directly from the editor. After that, chop the ends off and ship it. Making a podcast, take the same file. Drop it into Audacity, select the audio tracks you need, make any last minute adjustments, do a mix down, slap a limiter on it, and get it out the door. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a 45 minute talk, followed by 15 minutes of QA, shoved into a 10 minute video about how I use NetJack 2, my live to tape podcasting slash live stream setup on Linux. Do you use NetJack 2 in your production? Do you know what a NetJack 2 is? Let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to see what people come up with. And if you have any questions, throw those in as well. And remember, you can always support our content by becoming a patron, like these lovely people flowing by on your screen right now. They get to see this video a little bit early. Help with some Q&A, a little bit of pre-production, because that's how we do things. But like and subscribe, help other people find our content. There's not a lot of us out here doing audio stuff on Linux in any meaningful way, but most importantly, get out there and make something awesome.